Well, thank you for joining us uh, here in the Learning Center at Universal. Uh, my name is Neil McKenzie, Vice President of Marketing. And uh, if it's your first time here, thanks for coming. If you've been here all week, even better. Um, and uh, yeah, we appreciate you taking time to make us part of your market experience. Uh, there's a lot to see in our space. It's 115,000 square feet of shopping. Uh, we have a new collection on floor three with Aaron Valencic. Uh, we have some in-stock looks with Coastal Living and Miranda Kerr on floor two. We have a new collection called Nostalgia on floor one. We also have our special order offering, uh, shipping in eight to 10 weeks. And uh, we also have, uh, where the book signing will be, our designer's lounge. And the designer's lounge has some libations, uh, the beauty bar is in there. You can make an appointment or walk in. So if you need a hair touch up before you hit the town tonight, you can do that. Um, I would just ask that you just uh, simply check in at the front desk if you want to explore the showroom. Uh, they'll scan you in. And uh, we can actually give you a scanner. Everything in the showroom has a tag on it. You can scan it, kind of goes into a little shopping cart for you, if you will. And then when you check out, um, you'll get an email uh, with regard to everything that you scan. So it should make your shopping experience here at Universal a little easier. So um, we are very excited to have John McLean here, a fellow Scotsman, right? So that's great. So, uh, and, and like I said, I think John's given away, given away money and some, and probably a lot of good ideas to help help you with your business. So, um, no, we're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Oprah moment, yeah. So um, yeah, thanks for, uh, thank you for visiting. And we also are recording this. Um, so you can find actually all the events that we have in here uh, after market, probably the week of Halloween. Uh, we'll send out an email and make those available to you. So uh, yeah, so that, if, you, if there's any things that you missed, yep, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, John, kick it off. Let's Take it away. It. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. What a great room full of people. Hi, everybody. I didn't know I was going to see this many faces today, but I'm happy about it. So thank you for coming. Um, we're going to be talking about essential systems and processes that you need for your company and how to organize those. But before we do that, I want to tell you just a little story, okay? <laughs> and before we start, I want to thank this client for sending me this photo of themselves to use for the story <laughs> to illustrate what I'm about to tell you guys. Ah, so I was working with this fabulous client, quote unquote, and... We are designing this massive, massive home, and we are doing everything. We are selecting furniture. We are designing furniture. We are selecting all the accessories, every single thing for this client. Love this client, trusted this client, going through all the good, good, good stuff, right? Like sending me here, helping me choose this house that they were thinking about buying, all the things, so good. Love them. Um, then one day, I guess this client decided to wake up from whatever stupor they were in, <laughs> whatever medications they were on, and literally went ballistic, you guys. Went entirely crazy, lost their minds, called me yelling, screaming, why the, did you do this? And all the bad things that you don't want to hear a client tell you. I panicked for a hot minute, and then he said, I'm going to sue you for everything you have. I was a brand new designer. I I had nothing, he didn't know that, but I didn't have anything. <laughs> so take it. Um, and you know, it, it made me pause for a minute. And so what do you do? I found an attorney, scraped up the money. You guys, I was going back to all the stuff that I had ordered for this client without them paying me for. I had paid it out of my pocket. Packing it up, going to the warehouse, getting it all ready, sending it back, getting everything, trying to get any, begging vendors, please, 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 no, no, don't charge me your restocking fee. No, 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 don't do that. I don't have any money, please. You know, like dire straits, you guys, horrible. So much so that when, and, and, oh, and the funny part was, this client still wanted all of the stuff that I had selected for them. He was still in love with the design. He was still in love with everything that I had selected. And I had done everything from, see if this sounds familiar, throw mattresses in the back of my car, you know, take all the things, schlep everything around town, you know, go shopping with them, whatever you need, whatever you need, people please, people please. And it wore me out. But I did it because, you know, good client. So long story short, three months later, lots of attorney's fees, lots of sleepless nights, frankly, Almost cost me my marriage, believe it or not. Like, it was, it was literally the worst thing ever. So we go and <laughs> deliver the furniture to the client's home, and here's how that goes. So I pull up in my car. The movers pull up 
in the moving truck, two of them. And then guess who the third car was that pulled up? My armed security guard that I had to hire to protect me, not joking, from this client because I had been threatened, my life had been threatened by this client. So my attorney <laughs> felt that I should bring an armed guard with me. And it was the strangest thing ever. I almost went into robotic mode. I, I, I wanted to take all my emotions out of it because I had let my emotions, I feel, take me this far and they didn't serve me well. So it was all over. The furniture was delivered in the home. Document, document, document. You know, it's there, it's there. He can't say. Uh, and the client comes up to me and is like, John, like, I, I just don't know how this happened. Like, what? How did we get to this point? <laughs> and I, I didn't say a word, you guys. I literally looked at him and had a, a blank stare on my face. And I knew, I knew what the reason was. The reason was me. It wasn't this horrible client. It wasn't this client taking advantage of me. It was because I did not set up my rules and my systems and processes for this guy. So I get in my car, driving down the road, one tear, two tears, three tears, all tears, <laughs> Couldn't, could not even see the road, and I had to pull over to the side of the road, and I just let it all out. I was like boohooing all over the side of the road and just letting all the emotions come out of me. And it was that point where I realized that I had to get my business in order before I took on any other clients. And as bad as that moment was, and as I, I'm surprised I can even talk about it <laughs> because it was such a uh, moment in my life, but I, I say that because I don't want anyone else to ever experience what I experienced. I don't want anyone else to have those feelings. I don't want anyone else to feel like they are less than or not worth it because we all work so hard for our clients and they can sometimes take advantage of us if we don't have those systems and processes in place. So that, that pivotal moment is why I'm standing in front of you today, why I'm sharing all this information that I feel will hopefully help all of us as designers and be a more inclusive community, share information, share our good stories, share our bad stories, because I know we all have bad stories. I've heard some from a lot of you. But that led to where we are now for systems and processes. So I'm going to share some of those systems and processes, all the things that I started doing that day that basically turned me around and made me realize I wasn't on the right path. All right. So here's our goals. We're going to just define what systems and processes are, why we need them, and which systems and processes are essential for us as interior designers. I can't cover them all in this short time span, but I'm going to give you the ones that I feel are very important for us to know and to make sure that we actually follow through with. And lastly, how to implement those into your business. So some of it's going to be, I know, listen, we're designers. We want pretty things. Some of it's not so pretty and some of it's not so much fun, but just stay with me because I promise you it will help you. This is me. Who cares? Um, I'm an interior designer. I have an office in Orlando and in LA where I live. Um, I am a business coach now for you guys. I, I literally love sharing my information. I'm a tech nerd. I started my own business courses called The Designer Within, which is also the name of my book, which we're going to be signing after this. Uh, haven't met a cupcake that I didn't like. Dolly Parton fanboy, totally. This is Lily Custom Art that I had made for me. In there somewhere is a little 13-year-old John McClane dressed as Dolly Parton at his dad's company picnic. So there you go. Favorite child, I'm sure. Uh, but I, I love her because she, she knows she's so good at life and she's so good at business. And you just learn so much from people without even realizing that you're learning it. And most importantly, I'm an advocate for all of you because I am you, you are me, we are we, we're all here. Like, I, I know what you're going through. I know what you've been through. If anybody has a story that surpasses mine, <laughs> I'd like to hear it. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't. We'll, go, we'll have that over cocktails, maybe. <laughs> so let's talk about what and why. So... First of all, has everyone, does, is everyone familiar with systems and processes in general? And I know a lot of us probably have them in our head, but do we have them in our business written out in a format that everyone can understand? So systems are the overall deliverable. They're the thing. They're the bigger picture. 
that delivers all of the processes inside of it, right? So there's so many systems, but that system is broken down step by step by step by step by step with all the processes underneath that. So that's kind of the way to understand that. And by the way, at the end, I'm going to give you a link, and you can download the presentation. So you can take notes if you want, but you can have it all at the end. Um, processes are all the related sequential. That's very important to remember because they do go in a certain order. So they're the sequential activities inside of the system that make it all work and function. So systems, the bigger picture, processes are the little bitty parts inside of that, okay? We all good? Okay. All right. So this is probably what my systems and processes <laughs> looked like when I was working for this other client. Uh, just throwing them all together, throwing them in the funnel, seeing what happened. Oh, yes, onboarding. Oh, yes, shopping. Oh, yes, returning this. Oh, yes, you know, talking to this tradesperson. All jumbled together in one big mess. And that never works because there's no systematic order to any of those things. You get an unhappy client. You get a home that's probably not complete. You get a home that's probably over the investment amount that the client had agreed to. And most importantly, you probably don't make any money when you're doing these things. And to me, this is what it feels like. It feels like I am on a bumper cars and all the systems are literally, I'm bumping into my team members and I'm bumping into everybody else on the project and we, nobody's getting anywhere because we're literally just a bunch of bumper cars seeing how it turns out. So there's no order to that. But here are the way that I define the important systems that you should have within your company. So I have a little trio that I call them here. So it's my client systems, my trades and vendor systems, and then my team and internal systems. And I've, I've, analyzed, I've analyzed my company upside down, inside out, every which way. I've done every, every autopsy of every project. I've done every single imaginable way that you can analyze how a company works, probably so much that my team is sick of hearing me ask them, well, do you think we should do this better? Can we improve on this? But once I looked at everything and realized exactly what we were doing, these are the categories that everything fell into. And once I realized that, it, just, it was like a clear picture for me. I can understand, okay, yeah, that process goes here, and that one is a client one, and that one is a trade and vendor one. And I put trades and vendor in the same grouping because I feel like, in a way, they're supplying something to us, and we should, in, it, in return, be supplying an orderly process to them. And then, of course, if you have team members, how many here have team members um, other than yourself? Okay, and then how many are solo printers? Okay, been there, done that, all the above. So this will help all of us because whether you have 50 people or whether you have just yourself, you're going to want to keep everything in order and, and the process is organized. Okay, so this lovely little funnel it's so pretty, right? It's seeing pretty stuff for us. It's client systems, trade and vendor systems, your team and internal systems. When you put all of those into the funnel and create processes for those, you have a happy client, the project turns out beautifully, and you're not stressed as much, promise you that. And, oh my God, you can actually make money. Wow, what a concept, right? We can make money from what we do. So I have found that this is what has saved me from becoming a crazy, crazy maniac and doing that whole bumper car thing that we were just looking at. Okay, here are, I'm gonna move so you guys can see. Okay, here are some of the essential ones that I feel are important for, for clients, right? And again, I'll give you all of this, but I just want to touch on these now. Onboarding, we're gonna talk about that in detail in just a second. Um, how do you onboard the client? You're going to be surprised at how many steps there are in onboarding a client. It's not just, hi, client, let's come over and, and sign the agreement. No, 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 no. There's multiple pages I'm going to share with you on that. Uh, communication, how do you communicate with your client? What's your format? Is it email? Is it text? You know, how do you do all of these things? Is, and that needs to be documented. Um, your agreement, this client, I didn't tell you guys this, this client that I had, I didn't have an agreement with them either. It was like a handshake and a smile. Yeah. Never works. Um, my, my agreement now, you should know, is 22 pages. Thank you very much. <laughs> it covers everything from, you know, I don't want to hear what you have to say it before 8 in the morning to, you know, if your dog runs out, that's your responsibility. So I, I think I have it all covered now. But um, 
And then project schedule and timeline, I think this one's really important because it really does keep the entire project in line. We use something called Asana. I'm sure a lot of you know what that is. If not, we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. But I don't care how you organize your systems and processes, but you should organize them. And it's, it's not fun work. It's not easy work, but it will be so, so worth it. Um, presentations, that's just basically what it is. Like, how does that presentation process work? Do you have one? Do you have two? If they want to do revisions, what does that look like? All of the things. Sourcing, I mean, that's, that's a detailed one in and of itself, right? Procurement, all those things. Product approvals, um, if you don't have the right product approvals, you're going to lose your shirt. So a lot of these things in this specific process will help you if there is a time when you are being litigated or there is some sort of controversy with your client, a lot of your processes will keep those things from escalating to the point of bringing armed guards with you to an installation. <laughs> client acknowledgments. What I mean by this is, let's say you have a wall covering and it is a natural wall covering, the scenes are gonna show, or if it's a natural stone, it's not gonna be exactly what they saw on the showroom floor. You should have a system and a process in place to protect yourself if that client comes back and has some sort of issue with that. And that's just not as easy as saying, you know, here's a form, it's educating the client as well. So we have multiple steps in our process that educate the client on what they're about to purchase. And then they approve that based on what we require them to sign off on. Um, product returns, conflicts, hopefully they don't happen, but we know that they could. Billing conflicts, why am I charged this much? You didn't, took you that long to pick out a sofa, you know, that sort of thing. Scheduling conflicts, um, this is if there is someone who, you know, doesn't show up on the job site, all those fun things. Project revisions, how do you handle your project revisions? Scope increase, scope creep, you might know it as. How do you handle that? What's your system in place for that? We have, in my course, I have over 100 emails that are pre-written that I just give to my team and anyone else that you can just plug and play. And it's like, if this client has this question, plug this in. So it's, there's very rarely anything that I've heard or not heard over the years at this point from a client. So we decided to just put those in a very organized format. Uh, how do you handle your on-site meetings and how do you handle your in-office meetings? So there should be, again, these sound very simple on the surface, but every one of these has multiple, 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 multiple levels and steps underneath it that we need to follow every single time. I think of it like this. When I, when I opened my office in LA and I was in Florida, I moved to LA and I had my Florida team, I wanted to set that up sort of like a franchise, even though it wasn't a franchise. I set it up as if it were. So as you're doing this, you want these documents to be so that if someone picked this up, they could, anybody, could take that document and then run that part of your company. That's as simple as it gets, right? So you wanna make sure that these are so clear that someone who has no idea what design is or how to run a project, you wanna make sure that this is as clear as possible, clear as a bell, that every step is laid out very well. All right, next one is for trade and vendor. Some of these are an overlap, but you'll see that these are also probably things that um, we've all done. And we do them, again, we do them unknowingly. We do them as routine. We do them because we're good at it. And it's to the point when you take that information and document it, that's when you really realize how much you actually do as a designer. So your agreement, project onboarding, and, and there is a project onboarding process with tradespeople and with vendors sometimes. So remember that. You're not just onboarding clients. You're onboarding your trades as well. You let them know how you want them to behave on the job site. You let them know when they can contact you. Can they speak to the client? You know, all of these things should be documented in a process for them to understand. Um, I even have an agreement, like I have there, with my tradespeople. So if you're this many days late on a project, this is how much you're going to be paying per day. This is how much insurance you have to have. So there's so many things involved with not only client parts of things, but also the trades and vendors as well. Uh, purchasing, so if you're purchasing from a tradesperson, if it's a artisan, a local artisan, and you want to purchase something that they custom make for you, you want to make sure that you have a system in place for that. Deliveries and storage, this goes without saying. All of the things that we're ordering has to go somewhere. Hopefully not in anybody's garages, but I bet there are some people here who store them in their garages. I know I did that. Uh, client communication, do you allow the trades to communicate with the client? I mean, do you... Do you have a, a, a strict rule of no client communication with the tradesperson? Because that can get a little 
a little tricky. Team communication, how do you, how do you communicate with their team? So I always say you're only as good as the person who's on the project, right? So this GC can sell you the best service ever. Oh my God, I'm, I'm gonna be there all the time and it's so good. And then Joe gets there and he's drunk trying to install tile and, <laughs> and you're only as good as that person who is there on the job site. And you can't always handle that person because you're not, they're not your responsibility. So you need to have a, a process in place if that does happen, which is embarrassing for the client, it's embarrassing for you, it's hopefully embarrassing for the GC, but you wanna have a process in place like, okay, this happened, this email goes out to the client, this goes out to the tradesperson, this goes out to the GC, this is what we're gonna do, and it's about you know, over-communicating, which I love, love, love over-communicating, as you can tell. Uh, work quality requirements for the job, on-site procedures, so these are, how they operate when they are on the job site. Project revision, so if there is a revision on the project, what do you do, what do you supply to them, what's the process, how do they get that information to you, is it emailed, is it in person, if it is in person, who, who documents that? Lots of stuff, right, I mean, so much. Nobody tells you this when you're on watching HGTV and <laughs> like looking at all the pretty rooms. No one goes through all of the headache and the, the behind the scenes things, and, and by the way, I want us all to make a pledge to one another. We need to be more honest and more open and more authentic about what actually happens in our projects with our clients because our clients love a pretty picture that we paint for them, but what if they knew? What if they knew this was arriving late? What if they knew that this horrible thing happened and then you handled it in a perfect way? So you look like the savior of the situation but it also lets them know that, you know, you're not perfect. Things don't always go as planned. So I, I want us all to just be more communicative with each other, with our clients, and sort of bridge that gap between our clients and us because it's, it's, a, it's a big divide sometimes if we, if we, don't, uh, if we let it happen. Um, and then in-office meetings and meetings, all right? The last one, if you do have a team, um, you wanna have lots of processes for that too. So how do you onboard team members? How do you handle internal communication with your team members? How do you do client communication? Is there a lead person who talks to the client? If they do, what do they say? How does that process work? Um, internal office protocols. So what do you have inside of your office that you, know, you have to follow on a daily basis? And this could be everything from how the office opens to when is lunch, when you can close, who answers the phone, all the little things. Again, think of it like a franchise and that will make you realize how many things you need to relay as far as information. Um, time off requests, internal conflicts. <laughs> if someone's fighting, how do you handle it? You know, you are the, you're the leader. You have to know what process you have. If, if, if two of your team members are having issues, how do you, what do you do about it? And my husband's HR, so he's taught me a lot about what to do <laughs> about that. So thankfully, I've avoided making lots of mistakes in that area, I hope. Um, hiring, firing. Um, you need to have a process in place for that. What is your communication with the client, if you're, with your employee, if you're letting them go? Um, are you following all of the rules for that uh, legally? And just, you know, if, especially if it's an employee that you enjoy working with, but you have to let them go, you want to make sure you do that in a very delicate way, of course. Uh, pay, pay increases. And then this one is um, interesting because it's in the internal department because I actually like to have my team members create my systems and processes for me sometimes. And it's not because I'm lazy, it's because they're in the field and they're seeing everything that's happening. And so they may see something that I didn't even know. So a lot of times um, I will start the process or the system and overall, and then they will add in the specifics to that. And um, also, I also let them edit it as well. So we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, you guys good? We good? Okay, good, all right. I know. It's not them, it's not pretty things, but it's good stuff. Here is my little three-step process for figuring out your processes. You need to evaluate, implement, and then adjust. I think those are the three steps for anything that you do within your company a lot of times, but especially for processes. So first I want you to create a main list <laughs> of all the business activities that you do in one day. <laughs> are you tired already just thinking about it, <laughs> right? I mean, and I mean everything, everything. 
So for, uh, for 30 to 60 days, whatever you do, whatever type of project you're working on, I want you to write down every single thing you do. Called a client, canceled the tradesperson, uh, rescheduled the meeting, all the things, right? First of all, you're going to be very impressed with all that you do. You can pat yourself on the back for it. But this is going to be the basis for creating a good system for your company. And we all do things differently. Um, some of us probably do things similarly in some ways. But this is your, your little list. It doesn't have to be pretty. I give you permission to write it on a napkin. I give you permission to write it with a crayon. I don't care. Just write it all down because this literally will show you all the things that you need to get in order with your company. Then, remember those little trio I showed you earlier, my, my systems trio? You want to take all those tasks after that 30, 60 day period. And if, by the way, if you're having a project that is more construction or renovation or purely decorating, or if you're doing that and it overlaps, keep, keep taking those notes and keep writing those things down because those are all different systems and processes that you'll need for that specific type of work, right? But you divide those into your categories, little list, super simple, just a piece of notebook paper. And then, this is the part where you're gonna hate me. <laughs> I want you to list the process underneath every single one of those tasks that you laid out there, right? So if it was onboarding your client, I want to know, hello client, yes, you've reached my firm, to the last vase is put on the shelf. Like I want everything listed in there. Because this is where, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where you really realize what is in, involved in all of that. And you can take that and tweak it. And maybe you're doing something right. Maybe you're doing something wrong. I did a lot of things wrong. That's why mine got to where it is now. And I really made sure that I, I honed it. But you will get there. But just make sure that you do write all of those down. Now, I'll give you more than two months to do this. So, so take your time on this one. Probably more like six months to a year I give you to do this. Because this is very, very, very involved. This one you could write down. I suggest actually putting it into a Word document or a Google Doc just so you don't lose it. Next, you are going to implement. So all of these things that you wrote down, all of your systems, we're going to put them into action. We're going to get them out there. We're going to start using them. You're going to document all of these processes in a central location. I'm going to show you that in a minute um, in a very similar way. So you want to make sure that everything looks the same, so you have the same template for everything, the same heading, is your logo in the same spot? Where is the title of the SOP? Where is the, uh, how are the steps laid out? Everything should be very, very, very similar in how they look, so that when anyone pulls up that document, it feels very much the same as the one before, it just has different information on it. Um, then you start using them, right? So you're gonna start using all of these processes that you put into place, everything that you've worked so hard on, all of the steps, I want you to start using them. So step one, all the way down to step 455, <laughs> you need to start using them and make sure that as you do those, you are crossing those off. And again, we use Asana. So Asana is great because you can actually put in the task and then you can put in the person that you're assigning the task to. And if you're a solopreneur, it's probably gonna be you a lot of times, but that's okay. Um, but, but it could also be some sort of um, contractor that you work with, or it could be your bookkeeper. And the beautiful thing with Asana is that you can actually share that file with them and, and include them in on it. And there's a free version of it that you can use. We use the paid version only because you can set dependencies to kind of roll over if, if this happens and that will happen. But um, I encourage you to at least look at that. Um, there's a few other options out there which we'll talk about too. But start using them and then you adjust. So this is the part where you want to find out if what you did was correct. So I want you to put your ego to the side, which as designers, do we really have much ego anymore after our clients are done with us? I mean, come on. Uh, but ask your clients and your trades and your team for feedback. These are the people who are using all of these processes that you put into place. You wanna know if it's working. You wanna know if they need to tweak something or if something was erroneous or if this step should be moved before that step. That's your job is to follow through with that to make sure that they're happy with it because they're the ones using it. When I said that I asked my team members if everything's working okay, it's probably on at least a weekly basis. Uh, is this good? Are you guys happy with this? Should we change that? Are you good with this situation? Because they're the ones on the front line. And don't be afraid to ask your tradespeople either. They'll tell you. God knows they'll tell you if they're happy or not. So ask them if they're happy with the process too 
which is they are critical to the success of the project. Um, then you adjust, right? So you're going to adjust your processes based on that experience. So if they said something that should be changed and you analyzed it and you figure out, yeah, it should, adjust it. Make that change in there. Don't be afraid to do that. You can always go back and tweak these. Um, they're not written in stone, but you need to at least get them down so that you can adjust them after the fact. What I do is when we have an, a change on a, on a document or a process, I have the, the team member go in who changes it. They put their name in there. They put their date when they changed it. And so I know who to go back to if there was something that they found out that I didn't know or if there was something that another team member found out about a process. I know exactly who did it, and then they can talk about why they did it, and they're the ones to go back to. So it should always be kept up to date. And I suggest probably evaluating these I mean, not weekly like I do, but maybe like every six months or so, take a peek at them just to make sure that you know, you, what you have put into place is working. Okay, document these. Here's what we do. That's me after my, over my computer for about eight hours. <laughs> I wish my hair looked that good, actually. Um, so create a main online folder to store all of your systems and processes. And this is something where everybody should be able to access. You can even share that information with your tradespeople, with your vendors, but have one area where everybody can, sorry, I'm in your way. Have an area where every single person can go to to find that information. There's lots of innovative ways to do that, but the simplest way is just to use a Google Drive or a Dropbox or something like that. We like Google Drive personally. After you do that, I want you to create the folders for the subfolders for your client, your trade and vendor, and your team and your internal. So you have the main folder, and in that folder are the three subfolders that will house all of the other things. And, and this is a living, breathing uh, folder system, so you can add to it, delete, all those things. It's gonna be there. So just remember, as you create more systems and processes for your company, you can just keep adding them to it. And it just becomes, before you know it, you have this big, beautiful Bible of processes that you can implement on every project. Um, and then you want to create subfolders within each system folder. So you have your uh, system folders with your client, your trading, your vendor, and your internal systems. And then inside of that is all of the little things. So here's what that looks like. And I mentioned earlier, create a system, um, a process template that you can use for consistency. Okay, so don't, don't doze off on me. I know it's like not pretty stuff again, but I did make them bounce. I made the little folders bounce. So <laughs> I would keep you guys awake. <laughs> So this is the main folder that I talked about. And then you wanna move that down into, these are the three little uh, folders. Aren't they cute? They're jumping up and down, <laughs> really good. You're still with me, I even changed the color on it, so good. And then here are the phases. So we break it down, we have three main phases for our, our client journey, for our project journey. And I take all of those phases and those become the folders underneath that, which house all of the processes underneath there. So you can easily, divide your projects up into phases, ever how you would prefer to do that. We just prefer three big phases that house every single thing inside of it. It makes it good for compartmentalizing it. So, hi client, we're done with phase one, we're moving to phase two, here's where we are. I always say a client should never call and wonder what step we're, we're on in the process. And by having this, this allows my team and myself to be able to answer the question for every single client. And then it goes down to the little baby folders. And these little baby folders are the ones that have everything inside of it. So each one of those folders is a, is a separate system and a separate, or a separate process, I should say, underneath that system. See, that wasn't so bad. Okay, if you're not, if you're not someone who writes things down, you can actually record yourself with showing the system and, or showing the process to whomever you need to show it to. It's not my favorite way because I feel like the editing of this, if something changes, it has to be updated. But if, if you do want to do that, there is an option. I'm gonna show you how uh, some platforms that will do that for you. All the other stuff stays the same, by the way. So you still make the same layout of folders underneath there, but it's just videos. So it's yourself. Hi, you know, hi, here we are. We're going to onboard this client. Here is step one, step two. And you actually physically uh, on the video lead them through that. Um, I've done them for my team, God bless them. I forgot to turn the camera off and I've looked horrible at like 11 o'clock at night, you know, hair everywhere, but 
Uh, I've done them before. If you don't have a way in these um, video systems to do a folder, you can actually just create a link to that and then create one main Google Doc. So your main Google Doc will have just the title of that um, process and that system in there, and then they click it, and that will link over to that video for you to share with them. Here are some that you can use. Have you guys heard of any of these at all? No? Loom is pretty popular. It is kind of the main one that's out there. You can also record with Zoom, of course, whereby is one that we use internally for our own self sometimes to do meetings on. Uh, Trainual is one that I just found. It's really cool. You, it actually does it, kind of does it for you. Uh, Vimeo is another one. And then did you guys know you could record in Canva? Like I did this presentation on Canva, but you can actually record yourself inside of Canva on, on screen if you want and kind of lead people through. This last one, Scribe, is super cool. I just found it a few weeks ago. It's free. And it's an extension on the Google on Google Chrome. And as you're going in and you're on the website, so let's say I'm documenting how to pay my um, California sales tax. So I go on and I go to the website, and everywhere I click, there's a little circle that highlights where I clicked. And then I, at the end of that, it says, "Are you complete with your process?" Yes. It documents it for you. It actually puts step one. You went here. Step two. Click this. So it's very, very, very simple. So if you really want to get these processes out quickly, this is a really good way to do that. And again, for some reason, it's free. I don't know if they've just forgotten about it or what, but it's, <laughs> it's free and it's good. Um, okay, now I'm going to get very specific with you. Okay, this is a lot, but this is going to demonstrate I'm very dramatic. I love, to, <laughs> I love to show you how many things are involved in just the client onboarding process, right? Um, this is every step that we take from the minute we speak to a client until the minute we move them into the, to the next phase. So this is phase one for us. I didn't bring you phase two because that we would have been here all night, but this is phase one of what we do with our client. And by the way, I'm going to um, share with you at the end, not only this presentation, but you can actually, I'm gonna give you my Asana, uh, a link to download this process, and you can actually import that into your own Asana if you want. And then also, for those of you who don't want to do a sauna, I did a little Google Doc where it's actually just written out step by step so you don't have to open up any technology. I know. Yes, thank you. I know. I know my people. Uh, so... It's either way you want to go with it. But the Asana one is very cool. It's just a little folder, a file that you download, and then you import it in. But the Google Drive is really cool, too. So, you know, why not use that? So here we go. So this, fir this first part is just things that we keep on file for every client. And then I will say, this first part about personal info and links, this is something we keep on the top of every project. So this technically isn't client onboarding. We already have this information. But I wanted to put it here just to show you guys what we keep for, for that part of it. Um, scope of work, do you all include a scope of work in your agreement? And is it, if you don't, please do, and please make it very detailed. And I mean, details, like details, like two nightstands, two pendant lights, you know, that is your Bible to go back to if the client ever says, oh, I want to add this on, I want to add that on. You need that scope of work to, to fall back on. I'm not going to read all of this to you, don't worry. Um, but scope of work is one. And then we do a welcome the client in. So you can do a welcome video. You can do a welcome PDF. There should be some sort of formal process to bring the client in, get them excited. Hi, here we are. Here's how you access your client portal if you have one. Here's how we work. We have a great little how we work document that we send out that talks about everything from, you know, don't text us ever um, to... <laughs> to um, when we are in the office, to how, how they can communicate with us. All the things are in there for the client on the How We Work document. And I love it personally because it avoids a lot of uncomfortable conversations that we don't like to have as people pleasers. And we can just send that document over to them and they're just, they have it in their disposal. We actually upload it to their client portal so that they can access it at any time. Or I can copy and paste and send over and say, no, Sally, this is not what you're going to do because it says right here that we don't do that. Um, and then we move into set up systems. So all of our systems, there's a, 
<laughs> there's a system for our systems. So you have to set up all the systems inside of your client project. Um, and then these are some of the steps there. Then we invoice a creative fee. I've divided my fees up in a kind of a different way. I do creative fee. I do project fulfillment fee. So project fulfillment, I never, ever call it project management because I'm not managing projects. I don't do that. That's not what I signed up for. But project fulfillment makes more sense to me so that I can fulfill the design plan for the project with everybody else that's involved in it. And it just, I, I know litigation can happen and I know finger pointing can happen at any time, but it takes a load off of my shoulders to know that I'm calling it project fulfillment. And I'm very, very clear with a client, they get a two-page document that shows what project fulfillment is, and it shows them how many times we're coming to their house. When are we coming to their house? Is it for tile layout? Is it for lighting layout? What, what are we going to be doing there? They're never going to be like, hey, come on over, randomly, because we have it laid out for them for every project. <laughs> yeah. 22 pages, of course it's detailed. <laughs> <laughs> not, it's going to be 26. No, it is. It's in there. Um, I actually have all, I have 18 steps that we go through for every project. Um, this is internal. So this is, clients do not see this. This is, this is what keeps you in line. So a client might see some of this. So if it says email a client, these are action statements that you will take to implement that. But, but these, are, these are steps that you physically take, and some of, them, some of them are implemented for the client. Some of them you'll see are implemented for us internally, right? Like clients are not going to set up systems. We're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the creative fee is what we call, what you might think of design fee. That's what we call creative. So the creative fee is invoice. Here's what that looks like. Um, we invoice a retainer. We hold a retainer until the end of the project. This is what that step looks like. Then we send out a questionnaire. They've already answered a general questionnaire, but this is very specific. Are they doing a kitchen remodel, a bathroom remodel? Is it purely decorating? This goes a little more nitty gritty into their specific project. And then we go into the um, project inspiration images. We use house, you can use whatever you want, but Pinterest, anything, but we use house and we create idea books for every space that they are going to be um, addressing in their project. And then every one of those folders has items that they upload and then items that we upload as well. Then we go into the project investment. Lots of steps, right? See, this is literally just getting the client like onboarded into your, into your company. So project investment, this is where we figure out what the client's going to spend on that project. We've already talked about it in general during our consultation. Now it goes into the very specific part of how much literally do you want to put in every allowance for every category for your project. So this goes very, very specific. Then you want to set your milestone dates. And these are just big, big dates that you really want to have set in place. So you can see there, it's everything from presentations to when you're going to do a tentative installation, all the things that's gonna happen that you need to set as milestones. You need to try to put a tentative date in place for those so that it holds you accountable that this project's not gonna go on and on and on and on and on. You can actually end it on a specific time frame because it says it right there. Of course, we know there's adjustments to be made with everything these days, but for the most part, I do find that if you put the date in there, it will hold you accountable to it, and it will hold um, all of your team members and anyone else involved accountable as well. Um, and then you want to assign all the Asana tasks that I mentioned earlier. So these are assigned to specific team members with a due date inside of your Asana. So every single thing that's done for the project will have a due date and a person who's going to do that. I like it because it lets me go in at any point and see where we are in the project. Oh, yes, that wasn't done. Oh, yes, that was completed. But for a solopreneur, it really does. There's nothing more fulfilling than checking that done box and letting, <laughs> seeing that confetti fly and knowing that you marked one thing off your freaking list for the day, right? And then we do a site survey where we go out and all the measuring and documentation. But if you look at this, like take a little peek at this. So we do everything from not just scheduling the site survey, we email the client to let them know about expectations. This many people are coming, here's what's going to happen. You pack your little bag to go with you for your survey. You send them a reminder one day before because God knows they don't remember a lot. 
So you send them a reminder, anyone else that's coming out, you organize everything, you upload that. So this is just the site survey, and there's 11 steps under the site survey, just that one little task on the project. So I hope you're seeing how much detail we actually do and how much we actually bring to a project, and I hope it's opening your eyes to how important every single step is, and by writing it down and documenting it, you're not going to forget it because it's going to stare at you in the face. And Asana is good because it will, if you, when you log in, you have this many things to do today. This is, your ta- this is your due dates for the date. And you can even set reminders to remind yourself to do something the week before. So if something's due in a week, you can put a reminder in to ask yourself to complete that. We, we do a project direction board, and it's sort of like a mood board, but we call it a project direction board because... I feel like this is where the direction that the project is going. So all of the images that the client has saved, all of the images that we have added to their folder, we put that into this project direction board in a kind of a nice format. We have a template that we use. And that is what the client reviews with us. Then we require that they sign off on the project direction board. That's that's a very final step in this process. Then we move to trade day, which I know you guys are familiar with trade day, but trade day itself can be a a nightmare if you don't have processes in place for that. So that's what we have involved in our trade day. And then the last little line there is you complete phase one, you prepare to move to phase two, and you notify the client that the phase one is complete, and we're going to move to phase two. So does this make sense? Like you're seeing how every single thing has so many steps to the process, but it does keep you in line and it does keep your team in line and it lets your clients know. Here is a few software apps that I use to help me with systems and processes. (laughs) Just a few. (laughs) So here, well, I've I've used them all in one form or another. I've literally, I told you I'm a technology nerd. I love these things. They act like a separate team member, you guys. They literally will remind you, or for instance, we use Acuity for our um, scheduling of our consultations and for our uh, uh, discovery calls, right? So when we, when the client schedules a consultation with us on Acuity on our website, they get an automatic email that has a reply that we've already put into that. Not only that, but any uploads that we have, any documents, any PDFs that we want them to see at that point are automatically sent to them. Think about it. That's a manual transaction that you would have had to do on your own that this software is now doing. It's, it's really good. Some of them are dumb, but some of them are good. You know, So <laughs> we use Slack. I'll, I'll tell you guys which one we use. We use Slack all the time. It's a savior for us all the time. Um, Acuity we use, have some sort of client management software that you use, have some sort of, whether it's any of these, I don't care, just something that you use that will keep your client informed of what's happening on their project and they can approve products in there, everything's stored in one place. Please move away from the Excel spreadsheets and from the Google Sheets. That is not the way to organize a project. I I know a lot of you are doing that, and I'm not putting you down because I've been there too. I just am telling you there's better ways. There's a light at the end of that Excel spreadsheet, and it's called client software. Uh, Zapier is really good. So if you're wanting to connect a lot of these softwares together, you can zap something over. So for instance, if someone schedules a discovery call with us, it automatically adds them to our email list. So they get an email every month about what we're doing. So it's something that we don't have to do manually. Um, Monday.com is an alternative to Asana. So it's, it's like an Asana, but for us, we found it to be a little too techy feeling. Like the, the, the software just wasn't like flowing as well. So we went back to Asana and are, are very happy with that. Dubsado is good. I don't know if you guys, has anyone heard of Dubsado by any chance? Yeah, it's good because you can actually, it will do a lot of the automation for you. So if you want to move things along in a process, we use it to um, send out proposals. So we'll create the proposal in, a, in Dubsado and then send it out to the client and then they approve it. And then the contract is automatically generated. So they get to read 22 pages after they get that little pretty, pro- the proposal's really pretty though. Like the proposal has like the nice pictures in it and you know, there's a smiling and then they get the 22 page contract right after that. <laughs> uh, Flowdesk is good. We, we like Flow, HoneyBook by the way is another Dubsado um, companion, they can eat one or the other. Flowdesk is good. If you, if you don't have an email list, I do suggest that you start an email list because, God forbid, social media went away, and <laughs> what would we all do? The Kardashians would be literally without anything. But um, Flowdesk is good because if you want to put something free on your website to sort of 
capture clients' attention. And even if they don't buy from you, you can add them to your email list for when they want to uh, purchase from you, even if it's just a consultation. But Flowdesk is good. It's a software that will send that document over. So like five ways to choose the best paint color, you know, five ways to create a professional looking um, bedroom, things like that. They get it automatically and then they download um, that and then they're in your email list. Uh, Dropbox, you guys know that. And then Canva and PowerPoint, we use those both. This, this little thing was done on Canva actually. All right, we did it, you guys. So this is mission accomplished. Wake up. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I know this is very laborious and there's so many things in here that we don't like as designers to think about, but I want you to really see how important it is to think about your systems and processes, get those in line, write them down, give yourself grace to do it over a certain time frame. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get it done quickly because it took me 13 years total and then just to assemble everything in a readable format was about 24 months and I'm not even joking. So it is a long process, but you will be so happy when you're done. And if you're on vacation or if you're out of town or any, not even in the office for whatever reason, you can know that your team or anyone else involved on that project has everything written out for them to understand how to do it. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to tell you, if you wanted to download any of this, you can just scan this little thingy here, uh, QR code is what it's called. And it will uh, send you to a page and you can download the presentation, you get the Asana template, and then as well as the uh, Google Docs template for those who don't want to uh, go into Asana. But 